So certainly this is an industry which is uh, very much uh, oriented to innovation. So the companies uh, develop new molecules uh, in, uh, for disease that are unmet at the, at the present. And uh, so this industry is very focused and uh, what is also very important or makes a lot of uh, drivers is a uh, clinical news flow that is always uh, um, shown and presented at, at healthcare conferences. So also very important is the regulatory environment. So where you see that uh, uh, drugs, how fast the drugs are approved and, and, and if they are approved in the first cycle of filing, which was the case, for example, in 2016. And uh, also you see that we have in the US there is a new FDA uh, commissioner and he has stated quite clearly that he would like going forward to have a quicker path to approval, which is positive for the industry. These are companies that are very focused, so they have uh, very lean business models and um, usually they work in one or two disease areas. This is important, the, so they are really uh, focused research and development and uh, also when they have once they have drugs on the market, they can have very small, dedicated sales force. And uh, last, I would like to mention the fact that it is an industry that is has always been um, very um, a lot of M&A have, has taken place and uh, this has been uh, the case in the past and uh, we are very confident that it's going to continue for in the future. Uh, more than three quarters of the biotech companies are small capitalized uh, on the two billion of dollars market cap and these are uh, interesting assets either from technology or from the drugs that they that these companies have in their portfolio to be acquired by either larger biotech companies or larger pharmaceutical companies so those are the four key uh, points i would like to say it's innovation focus uh, m a and regulatory environment So Celgin is uh, the leading uh, oncology player in uh, liquid blood cancer. Um, it has uh, Revlimid on the market uh, and is going to sell uh, for up to $6 billion this year in uh, Revlimid uh, only. So this is in the space of hematology, but they are also uh, active in other spaces like in inflammatory and Im immunology with uh, sales of up to 1 billion in Otesla after two years of launch and um, also they are active in uh, in solid tumors and they have a Braxane on the market and also here we see a growing franchise of up to 1 billion sales for a Braxane only. So and also what is interesting uh, at this company is that they have uh, more than 100 uh, collaborations with a small smaller biotech or also private companies that are all active in these three areas. And that, by that, they can broaden, the, broaden their own pipeline and uh, they have one of the deepest uh, oncology and uh, immunology pipeline um, as a whole, as a company uh, up to now. It's uh, the one of the top five uh, position in the biotech uh, fund and uh, we, we are very optimistic to see see that the company is able going forward uh, the next three to five years to continue to grow at a, a, at a pace compounded annual growth rate of about 20%. So uh, it's again, it's uh, on four fronts, I would say, it's at the innovation. Uh, we, have, we are going to have a lot of uh, readouts, uh, clinical trial readouts uh, from the, the companies that we have in the portfolio, being it either in oncology space, for example, with uh, Celgin having pivotal uh, data for Revlimid, uh, uh, so additional uh, indications this year. And also we have, uh, are going to have a lot of readouts in the orphan drug disease space with companies like Alexion or Biomarine or Alnylam 
And uh, then we have also a, an important part of the portfolio that is uh, invested in uh, central nervous system disease. And for example, uh, we had just a catalyst uh, with neurocrine having a, an approval of their newest drug in Tardif dyskinesia, but we also have uh, p pivotal uh, status and data that are awaited for companies like Sage uh, or um, GV Pharma. So this is at the clinical data set um, level. Then we have regulatory environment. So the regulatory environment is certainly going uh, positively, either in the States or in, in Europe. In Europe, we are going to have a further rolling out of the new prime priority review, which is important for drugs that are going to be approved in, uh, in Europe. And in the States, we have the, um, the following. We have uh, under the new administration, we have also a new FDA commissioner and uh, they stated quite clearly that they would like uh, going forward to have quicker approval lines. So that means uh, usually today uh, it takes up to 12 months to approve a new drug and uh, going forward we could uh, see a quicker uh, filing and approval uh, time frame. And so this is overall is positive for the, for the biotech industry. Then we have M&A um, and we think that we are going to see M&A activities in, in mainly three areas or three um, company types. So either in the oncology, in the cancer area or in the neurology space or in the orphan disease space. So most probably these type of M&As are going to take place rather in the second half of this year, once we have a bit more clarity on tax, tax reform and, and, and repatriation, especially in the US and for US companies that have a lot of cash based uh, outside the US and would like to then uh, make uh, M&A acquisitions. And then um, it certainly um, continued, yes, continued uh, focus of these companies and, um, and, and deal-making um, activities around uh, each company in their precise uh, area that would like to maybe also um, broaden or have more drugs in their own pipeline. So Vertex is a company, a US-based company working in one major disease area, which is the cystic fibrosis. These are patients that have a mutation in one gene, the CFTR gene. And the CFTR is a channel protein that helps uh, chlorine to flow across the cell membrane. But once uh, these patients have this mutation in this uh, gene. Uh, these patients develop uh, mucus and have a very difficulty to breathe and have a very high uh, risks of uh, additional infections. So uh, Vertex was able to develop the first uh, modifying treatment for cystic fibrosis patients and has uh, Calideco, their first product on the market. This product um, can target 12% of the cystic fibrosis pa patient population, so which is uh, which was a, a great improvement bef uh, before there was uh, almost no treatment uh, on the market, and they have also a second product uh, targeting. Uh, also the CF population but can uh, or can be that can uh, target more than 46% of the patient population but nevertheless it's not covering all the CF patients so uh, they are working currently at a so-called triple combination uh, where they could uh, treat additional uh, patients with CF and we are going to see more uh, phase two data uh, this year. So this is actually um, very important data that we are await for Vertex for the second half of this year. Uh, taken together, we think uh, with these th three uh, products on the market, we continue to see uh, a high growth for Vertex, uh, also in the range of 20% in the forthcoming years.